Hey everyone, this is Zach Linton. This is the final interview of my trip out to Chico to minister to the refugees. If you haven't already seen it, please check out the first of the video series entitled Through the Fire, Journey to Chico to Minister to the Refugees. This final interview is a woman named Patty. I met her at the East Avenue Church shelter. She's a wonderful human being. Uh, she is 90 years old. And she actually wound up telling me in the course of our conversation that she used to be a professional actress in Hollywood back in her early days, literally in the 50s and the 60s. She was in The Sound of Music. She was in a movie called Giants. She was in a movie called The Robe uh, and a bunch of other ones. Her screen name is Pat Cortland, C-O-R-T-L-A-N-D, for anybody who is a movie buff or wants to look any of that up. Um, her story was really profound. Uh, literally, she was saved through the flames. I'm going to post a picture right here. This was the vehicle that she and her caretaker, Susan, were literally riding in with flames on both sides. Uh, and, and just, it looks like a melted ice cream cone. So enjoy this video. So I am here with Patty. Patty, tell us what was it like to be in the fires and how did you get out? Well, Zach, uh, at 8.30 in the morning, my friend Susan came. <clears throat> She didn't even knock, she just opened the door because she has a key, because uh, she takes care of me uh, during the week, all, all every seven days a week uh, for two hours a day to see it, that my world is happy and good. And when she came in, she just said, Patty, I, I'm glad you're awake and dressed. Just get your purse and we have to run because the fire, my neighbor said, the fire is coming. And I said, okay, I grabbed my my purse and I grabbed my little collage here that I because I had pictures and I just something said take it and that's what I did and uh, we had a fellow gentleman help me into the car and uh, we started down Pence Road and I don't really know all the roads of the car so uh, the fly, fire was just everywhere it was on all four sides and you saw the, how terrible my side was Every now and then we could stop and we'd see what was going on. And once in a while, in one minute, there was a, uh, a wonderful thing that happened. I looked up and I saw a big truck that said Paradise. Yes. And then I saw an angel, really fireman on the top with a big hose. And he was spraying it all around and he was cooling our cars down. The wind, it was hitting the windshield and the car to me because he knew it was very hot for us inside. So that was one thing that we experienced. But then we would go uh, to different uh, places where you'd parking lots. We'd stay at a parking lot. The police uh, brought us there. We would follow them. And then it would catch on fire. Uh, the building would, and we would have to leave, go to another one. And we went to two or three maybe four, but at least three if I remember. And uh, so, so fine, yes, you, yes. Ask this question. So now you were living in paradise. Yes. And this woman who was helping you, her name is Susan. Susan. And she um, was uh, assigned to you via Medi-Cal. By Medi-Cal. for you to move around. I couldn't and, walk. And in a way, these fires came so rapidly into your neighborhood that uh, she was literally a part of your rescue. Because oh, she, she was. She saved. Help get you, you she saved my life. You would have perished in the fires. Abs I would have. We both would have together. And, and so, when did you realize the fires were coming? You saw that on the news. You said no. When I woke up, I had the TV down low. I didn't see anything. I didn't. I wasn't aware. And my phone did ring. One, it rang a couple of times, and it was right beside me. So I, I picked it up and I said hello. I didn't hear a thing. Yeah and just went, I heard not so I, I thought, well, it's a wrong number. And I really didn't know there was a fire out there until Susan came through the door and said, we have to leave right now. The fire is on, on us. It's just coming up the hill. Wow. So literally, if she had not come at that very I moment, I would have perished. Minutes later, it would have just been too late. It would have been too late. got into the car. And then you tried to get on the road, and right. even even having left as quickly as possible, there were flames everywhere. Flames everywhere. Right. 
and the cars couldn't move. We couldn't go backwards, forwards, sideways. They were coming from all different directions. And so you guys finally got out of there uh, after how long were you in this traffic before you knew you were finally safe? And, and tell okay. us about yeah. the other parts of that. Right. We were uh, in the car from 9 o'clock till 6 o'clock at night. So Couldn't 9, move. 9 p.m. till 6 a.m. the next morning? 9 o'clock till 6 o'clock that night. 9 in the morning uh -huh. till 6, 6 in, in the evening. You were in and the car for 9 hours? For 9 hours. Wow. Like and just bumper to bumper traffic? Yeah. Oh, to yeah. Out. That's it. And we finally got down to where uh, we were heading for the, oh, we were heading for her boyfriend's house in Chico. And we did get there, and I couldn't walk up his steps. See, at 20 steps, she thought maybe he could, uh, could lift me in my wheelchair, but that was impossible for him to do. I didn't want him to hurt himself, and it wouldn't have worked, I know that. And so what he did, he jumped in the car with Susan and myself, they put me back, and his beautiful children helped me. He had his boy and a girl, and they helped me get in the car, and then we started to head down for, I guess, some place to stay. They were trying to find me a place where I could go because I couldn't stay with them. So we stopped by the hospital, and they, they were full up. They, couldn't, they didn't want me to be sitting in the lob lobby when they knew I had a lot of pain. And so we kept going. And that's when we ended up here at this beautiful church. At East Avenue. And how long East. have you been here? I've been here since Thursday, the day the fire started. Wow. And I've been treated so beautiful with love, affection, kindness. Uh, they love Jesus. I, I think all God's family came here. Wow. And the pastor, Pastor Ron, is wonderful. Amen. He gets up and says, whatever you need, it, it, it's not impossible for yes. us to get it for you. Amen. Yeah, I've met Pastor Ron, and I Thank can vouch you. also that he's a wonderful guy. Yes, he all is. All the staff here, uh, everybody's working together. There's yes. real cooperation. Um, right. It seems like a wonderful church, East Avenue Church in Chicago. Absolutely. And tell the audience about the prayer that you prayed when you were in the car. While I was in the car and the... The, le the flames were everywhere. They, they were even on the windshield. And Susan jumped out with a, uh, ha a hanger, and she beat the flames out. I don't know how she did it. I thought the window was going to break, and if it did, it would come on us. Yeah. So she jumped. She's so brave. She jumped back in the car, and uh, I lost my turn of thought. I'm sorry. Oh, we were talking about flames. It was just, it just never went away. And my, my, when she did that, then she jumped in, I looked at the little dogs, you know, her beautiful little dogs, and I said, uh, dear Lord, oh Jesus, please, we don't want to die, and I know you don't want us to die, so I pray that you will give us a supernatural, wonderful miracle, and I know only you can do it. And immediately I felt a cool feeling in the whole car. Wow. It was, I couldn't, I had these glasses on like this because I didn't want to see it. <laughs> I was trying to hide it. I touched them. It was so hot, I couldn't even, I, I couldn't touch it. Wow. It was like an oven. And, but when I prayed the prayer, everything went cool. Wow. It was so beautiful. And I knew he heard my prayer. And he we, saved us. We actually got a picture of the vehicle that they were in that I will show in the video uh, when I edit. You can see the side of the vehicle is basically melted. Melted. That is how intense That's where I was, was sitting. And, and this really was a miracle. It was a miracle. We thank you, Jesus. You are the great physician. We thank you, Lord, for loving your children. Amen. And although your home is burned down now, how are you feeling? Uh, how do you feel like God is taking care of you in this I, time? I feel blessed, Jack. Zach, I feel so blessed to have a, at a later time in my life I will be 90 years old on my next birthday and I'm proud to say it you know I'm not hiding my years I've had a beautiful wonderful life loving him and uh, like I told you I was in the Salvation Army and church too 
a little sunbeam when I was five, a girl guard when I was 12. But the real point of all of it, he's never left me. He will never leave me or forsake me. And he has really shown me miracles when I've had to flee from Satan and his cohorts, wherever I might be. I knew I had to get out wherever it would be. Uh, uh, someone maybe told me something that I believed and it wasn't true. And I was in a lot of, uh, we'll put it this way, uh, harm. And I knew it was harm. I was discerning the person later and I should have done it at first, but that's how we learn and grow. And I heard the Lord say, get out, leave now and I will help you. And he always did. I've jumped out of windows. Uh, I, you know, so many things happen. We won't go into it, but I'm sure everyone out there has gone through the same thing. It's a battle every day. I know that, but I'm so happy that I, I listen to T Trinity Broadcasting Network. I love them. Matt and Lori are beautiful. They're taking on for, uh, Matt's taking on for his father, Paul Crouch and their mother, Jan, just passed away, but was cured of cancer for at least two or, two or three years without even going to have, uh, what do they call it, the, um, what, something that, chemo. the chemo. She didn't want it, she didn't get it, and he healed her anyway. Amen. Amen. And everyone, everyone was praying for them. So I've just been blessed. More than anything, I learned to put on the full armor of God every single day. My helmet of salvation, and the one I love, peace, love, joy, grace, and mercies, with an S, and the spirit of the sword, which is the word of our King Jesus, because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and nothing was made without him. Amen. And what would you like to say to other people who are suffering at this time? I will say to you, just trust in the Lord. Never give up. Just believe and you will receive. And read the Bible, that's his word. When Satan tried to ruin him, he just said, it is written. And that's all he had to say. And to me, it was, God is, our Father God loves us so, it's just pure and simple. He makes it not difficult because we're his children. And uh, just everybody just loves the Lord, say the Lord's Prayer. And I love the 23rd Psalm. It really works for me. But pick anyone in the Bible, like Zach said, what was the Bible? Acts. Read Acts and you will learn a lot. And uh, read Revelations and you will be blessed. That's it. Thank you, Zach. I love you. Thank you for your prayer. You, thank you so much.